This is Wretched Radio <laughs> with Todd Free. Send your stuff to idea at wretchedradio.com. No, that's not right. Oh, no, I'm going to get busted again. Wretched I go What are we? Who are we? Why am Wretched I here? Media. How did I get here? Idea at wretched.org. That's it. Wow, trained monkeys are better at their jobs than I am. Idea at wretched.org. Or look. Well, they do have less of a job. Well, I'm, I'm more like a Pavlovian dog. I've already been trained, and it's tough to teach an old dog new tricks. I really regret saying that. Send stuff to idea at wretched.org. Idea at wretched.org. Very, very grateful for this. Please note, I'm going to try to be very fair about this. About uh -oh. six, maybe eight weeks ago, very excitedly, we talked about the Bible Museum that is opening up in Washington, D.C. It has already opened up. And we were very excited about it, very hopeful for that. And we still are. Read a review of somebody who was not trying to be snarky. They weren't like, oh, I hate it. It was too, it should have been and being all nitpicky and, and just kind of taking away the finding enough little tiny detail stuff to just besmirch the whole thing. But their review of it was it doesn't put the Bible in the lofty position it deserves. It treats it more like a book of antiquity that has had a big impact on culture. Do with it as you see fit. Now, on the one hand, I get that. They're trying to create a museum that just says, okay, here's this book. Look at what it's done. If you are a Christian, you know that it is the inspired, infallible, inerrant, sufficient word of God, and you can appreciate it as such. But we're just going to present it so that even a pagan can go, oh, okay, I see how that, oh, yeah, got it. All right, so they, they treat it like it is a pot that they found at some archaeological dig. While I understand that, uh, why, would a, why, would a, why would a Christian want to do that? <laughs> I just wouldn't do that. It's, it's God's word. God has spoken in his word. And it's not just about how it's transformed cultures. It's done that, yes, hospitals, yes, volunteer organizations, yes, school, yes, commerce, all of the government, yeah, check, check. It saves souls. It reveals who God is so that we might know him. And it's transformed millions of lives, and it's changed the eternity of, dare I say, billions of people? That would be the focus. And if you're a pagan and you don't like it, well, I'm sorry. This, the, this, this tour isn't for you. We read that review and we said, this is one person's perspective. Received an email sent to idea at wretched.org. Idea at wretched. Attaboy. I think I'm just Attaboy. driving around you're in right my car. I'll just start repeating that over and over again so I can look like a there babbling you knucklehead you pull up next to. Who is he talking to? He doesn't have a Bluetooth in. Idea at wretched.org. Laura Moses. Looking forward to seeing her family, by the way, at the G3 conference. Are you going to be there? Find out more at the G3. G3, what is it called? G3. Joey, give everybody the website if you'd be so kind. Google.com, enter G3 conference. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Todd. Thought you might like to have a little bit more info about the Museum of the Bible. Well done as far as state-of-the-art production, beauty, and historical documents. Uh, one of the critiques, by the way, that I recall reading is a lot of the documents, not all, a lot of the documents weren't the actual documents of antiquity, replications. Yeah. Does that take away from it? Uh, yes and no, because remember, there's nothing to with those documents. There's not supernatural power. It's just kind of cool to see something that's 500, 1,000 years old. There's no, it, it's not like they're, they're, Seeing a representation of it gives you the gist. Eh, the real deal is just a little cooler, nevertheless. Said it's very minimalistic without a gospel message and at times undermines the authority of the Bible altogether. Now, that was not just Laura's opinion. She sent in some of the text from it. This was the welcoming audio clip called Ancient Oral Storytelling from the Fourth Floor History of the Bible. Now, I'll just read some of this to you, and you tell me what you think of this, all right? In 1929, a Syrian... I wouldn't hire you for one. Well, I was just doing my best to sound like... Oh, you want to hear something creepy? I you don't hear need something you to be an NPR creepy. announcer, okay? I wonder if I can... <laughs> just say it. What school do they all go to? I kn they, they go to that... 
High Church Homily School. Prepare now to hear the Word of God. This, 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 this was from the Mormon Endowment Ceremony. I don't know if I can find that for you or not. Yep, I can. Are you familiar with a Mormon Endowment Ceremony? This is where you no. go. It, it's a, it's, it's creepyville. This is this is where you go well. before before you get married, and and or even after you've been married, I guess. And then you do the sealing ceremony, where the man learns the new name of the woman, the wife, so that he can call her from her grave, so that she can get to heaven, if she knows the right handshakes to use with the angels who are guarding heaven. You know what book of the Bible that's taken from? None. Listen to the voice work. It's creepier than me. The officiator will represent Elohim at the altar. A couple will now come to the altar. Who is this? Now, the, the couple is coming. This is undercover, by the way. They represent Adam and Eve. Brethren and sisters, this couple represent all of you as if at the altar. You must consider yourselves as if you were respectively Adam and Eve. Was about, we do the rest of the program like that. And all of God's people said, no, Uh -uh. thank you. In 1929, a Syrian farmer discovered a vast underground vault that contained tablets, vases, because they're worth more than a dollar, jugs, and gold and silver. This was from the ancient Canaanite city of Ugarit. Unless you're from the south, then it's probably Ugarit, because they tend to put the accent on the first syllable. I-N-S-U-A- I-N-S-U-R-A-N-C. Northerner, what number one, Tony? How do you say that word? I N I I Idea at wretched.org. I-N-S-U-R-A-N-C-E. It's a card you have to bring to the doctor's office. Blue Cross Blue Shield is a what? Insurance company. Yeah, insurance. Did you hear where the accent yeah. was on the second syllable? Insurance. That would not be correct. That would be... Insurance. <laughs> That'd be the anti penult. Nevertheless, if you go to a doctor in the South, do you have your insurance card? If you have visited the city of Ugarit, they did a dig there. Among the intriguing discoveries were poems similar to biblical psalms and laws similar to biblical laws. Now... Listen very, very carefully. When discoveries such as these are made, the question presents itself. How did these common elements come about, and what do they reveal about the origins of the Bible? In some cases, scholars conclude that texts adapted stories directly from earlier writings. In other cases, they argue that stories, perhaps related in some way to historical events, were passed down orally for many generations. As stories were told and retold, religious groups interpreted them in their own ways and then captured these stories in writing. Some groups may have believed that religious authorities or even divine revelation itself unveiled the truth in these stories. Opinions differ on what this means for the interpretation of the Bible. What is clear is that the Bible weaves many unique stories together with some it shared with surrounding cultures. Those shared stories are presented in a distinctive way. And all of God's people said, that ain't what the Bible is all about. That is not even close. That puts the Bible on par with other cultures' tales. No, the Bible is the authoritative source. Are there some documents that appear to resemble the Bible? Yes, but that's all they are. They resemble, but they're not. The Bible is superior to every book. I think you might be right about this, Laura. In another section, kids are welcome to translate the Bible. Here's what it said. Many stories in the Bible involve, oh, this one is where instead of using sheep and shepherds, we've got to put it in the right context. So if you're teaching this in Alaska, make it seals and and whatever a shepherd would be in Alaska. No, you teach them what a sheep is because a sheep is different than a seal. You teach the Bible, not contextualize it to the point where it's not identifiable. Now, she completed the survey, sent the disappointment that she discovered at the museum, and she received a response. Why didn't you preach the gospel? Here's the canned response. 
The Bible, the Museum of the Bible is a non-sectarian, and even though many of our board members and staff have a specific set of beliefs, the museum was created to invite all people to engage with the Bible. But we do have the following information in the museum about Jesus and the gospel. Guests will hear the New Testament story of a new community of both Jews and Gentiles whose growth was fueled by belief that God is leading people home through Jesus, whom they believe God raised from the dead to rule as a king. Throughout the 430,000 square foot building are quotes by and about Jesus and images of Jesus as he is a, a key figure in the Bible. Not saying you should go or you shouldn't go, just saying you should know before you go to the Museum of the Bible. Let's just put it this way. It doesn't have the same view of the Bible as, say, I don't know, the Ark Encounter or the Genesis uh, Answers in Genesis Creation Museum, where they actually have a appropriate view of Scripture and might be more worth your time. But hey, don't let me tell you where to go for vacation. This is Wretched Radio. Don't forget, if you would like to hear the entire daily broadcast, simply visit wretched.org, go to iTunes, figure out your favorite Android listening platform, and you can listen to the entire program every single day, downloaded to your listening device for free. Well, thanks to our monthly supporters called the Gospel Partners. If you'd like to partner with us, we'd be very, very grateful. Simply visit wretched.org.